So this show was curated by Ken Dubin. He's the one that brought these artists together, found all these people that he loved, and then I was expecting a show that was a little bit more of a kind of these serious sculptors doing, you know, the, their general kind of work, and we were going to have a sculpture show. And then it turned into the Whimsy Show. So say a little word about how all this, how it turned into the Whimsy Show. Well, the, the Whimsy part was always there from the very beginning, as was the sculptural dimensional uh, aspect. What I could do is read this. It wouldn't be such a bad idea. Go ahead. Okay, because I think this is pretty good. And it, and it helps set the tone of the show the way I, I thought about it. Um, because the word whimsy, you know, everything can be pretty whimsical. It's a fun word and everything. And it's, this is what, how I th think about it. And so maybe it's just kind of a good way to enter the show. Uh, so I just have, it's hanging here, but I've got the word whimsy and then uh, playful, the trait of acting unpredictably, an unusual, odd, unexpected, or fanciful idea a strange but playful and funny quality. Play, amuse oneself by engaging in imaginative pretense, the space in or through which a system can or does move, a particular action or the quality of the action. So, I mean, this is all about the art on the wall, as far as I can, you know, see it. Uh, deliberate, coordinated movement, the action or manner of engaging in, and then quirk, a strange attitude or habit, for, uh, peculiarity, oddity, eccentricity, a peculiarity or behavior, an idiosyncrasy. And then tongue in cheek, uh, cleverly amusing in tone, with ironic or flippant intent, or characterized by irony or whimsical exaggeration. And so the title of the show, Whimsy, Play Quirk, and a Tongue in Cheek Aesthetic. So th this is you know, kind of how I saw the idea of play and why I see it in all the work here, basically, and how I uh, thought about it. And then the idea of the, if you want to kind of start actually with the going through the show, we can maybe, I'll just quickly, and, and then we can get to the artist. That's artists what we'll do. Now we don't have all the artists here, so let's take, let's say a word or two. We're going to have Amber speak in a moment, okay. but, um, Say a word or two about Judy's piece in the window and this piece as you enter. Okay. Well, uh, Judy not, is not here today, so I, I would be nice to hear what she has to say. And, and this was kind of, this is one, one of the very few that was a bit less minute. And uh, so I think, you know, this maybe fits with, I mean, besides being a strong piece, uh, these, this one here is, I would say, more whimsical. The idea, the materials that it's made of, how, how they play with each other, hanging up, hanging in these separate forms, and this one is just kind of—it's fairly whimsical with yeah, the material it's made of, I think, actually. Which is <laughs> but like, it's quite a strong sculptural piece at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> but this is; these are a lot of this is just recycled materials, which is pretty fun. I think she uses all recycled. We got a chandelier effect with recycled materials all right um, what would be good if I could just really quickly mention uh, Benjamin Garters who uh, Gardner who is who teaches at Drake uh, in Des Moines can you swing this around mm -hmm. <coughs> the idea of, of, of being sculptural and dimensional and and how we get to the, these paintings is because uh, you know I Although they're really good paintings and you know a lot of activity that's going on that's probably you know quirky in itself and whatnot, but to me they become uh, they're two dimensional of course, but but they it's like they want to become three dimensional sculptures in a way. So so when I look at these, I, I find the play in them is this tension that is that that they're flat paintings that want to break out and become sculptural. So even though we have two-dimensional, I see it fitting it as dimensional in, in, some, in that way, in that regard. He's been doing some three-dimensional work, hasn't he? Yeah, I noticed over the, over the months, uh, year even, that he actually did break out of the two-dimension and he would, 
he would, you could definitely tell it's similar work, but you know, things wrap around the gallery, colors and forms and whatnot. So he actually finally did break out of the two dimension. Uh, I don't know where he, what he's doing it right now, but uh, I guess he, he had to do it. He needed to do it. He must have been going in that direction. So. They, they are quite spatial. I can see that they're wanting to break out. And then the, uh, the three-dimensionality of the support uh, it has a sculptural yeah, element just to begin two. with. Yeah. Well, they're pretty cool. All right, I'm going to go over here and uh, talk to Amber for a minute. I love Amber. I always call her the free spirit, the flower child of, the, of her art scene because she is kind of like flits here and there and she gets away with it. <laughs> she does wearable art, she does fabric pieces, she does, she did three dimensional, she, I first met her doing the three dimensional design show here with the university. And, uh, and in this show she has three quite, well she has three bodies of work we might say, uh, quite different. She has the chicken that's in the window, but she loves her farm and I think she'll say a word or two about that. And then this piece that's the, like the octopus seat, that was part of the three-dimensional design program. That's right, isn't yeah. it? Made out of what? Recycled, Recycled materials? Recycled, yeah. yeah. And then she has three sculptural pieces that are quite lovely back here on the pedestals, and we can maybe talk about them more when we get there. But say just a word or two. Uh, you don't have to give a big speech <laughs> about <laughs> how, where, where it's all coming from. Oh, um, OK. Well, my work in general is um, a response to nature, to my life, uh, living on a farm with chickens and geese and ducks and turkeys. Um, and just, just, just straight out of me, my experiences and personality. Um, I don't think too much, I just do my work. I just enjoy making and I make in a lot of different mediums. And uh, I just let whatever happen, happen. So. Not everybody can get away with doing that, you know. They just <laughs> bounce all over and nothing happens, but oh. things happen when you do that. Okay. So I, 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 that's why I like that you're this element in the scene here, doing that and getting away with it. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the naughty child. <laughs> yeah, just the, the flower child. <laughs> all right, well, um, let's get Jim to say a word or two about these pieces. I think they are a word or two. <laughs> That's all right. That could be it. You, you don't really have to say much. Say is, you know, I hope that people can look at them and slow down a little bit. And, uh, but you got started doing. Paintings. You got started yeah. doing this though from the more three-dimensional wall pieces when you went away to the residency. Is that right? Is um, that how you got kind of I launched on this, or were you already doing this kind of thing? I you were already doing paintings, I know that. Yes, <clears throat> for a long time, but I think what happened at that, in that particular situation is I have drawing books full of um, <clears throat> studies, and I'm thinking three-dimensionally about them, and those, I took one of them with me to a residency, <clears throat> and uh, focused on a particular drawing and most of the paintings that I've had been working on previous to that were things that I started and then I reworked and and many of them went out the surfaces were important and the relationship to the edge and stretching across the canvas and so on but most of the sculptures that I was making were m more to do with an object in space and then how it related to the wall. So these drawings were developed in that way and I just took one of those drawings and started all fresh canvases and thought can I, what can I do with that just on with color and paint and then during that time I was there for a month like uh, made many paintings and many drawings. So it was fun to see this body of work emerge at that point. Was it cool? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're very, you know, I see these as sculptures myself. They're, that's just another, uh, these paintings that are, although they're two-dimensional and flat, you know, the, the play that, the, they're almost like figures and these shapes are sculptural. 
and they you know in a way they could they want to they want to play with the, these the lines next to them and these I always uh, kind of seem like that they actually have these human uh, type of aside to the shapes and stuff and they want to kind of play and speak to each other and to me they're like really dimensional they could be they are sculptural in a lot of ways I see them as well you spend a few minutes with each one and the space all starts happening because I can you, I start suck, you start sucking me <clears throat> into your head space that you're playing with with these <clears throat> and how the lines and they're very tightly shapes. tightly you know put together this used to be, you can move, I kind of can move a lot faster with painting and getting out what I wanted to do, drawing even faster, but then this is something in between, there's more time invested in sculpture and, and so these relationships in space, they're just a building block to the next thing that happened. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> All right, let's move into the next room.